Question 16 to 17 in the ACER green paper. Question 16. Of the following, a lung is best represented by the... So in essence, it's a fairly simple question. If you understand what a lung looks like, in essence, what we have is a uh, lung enclosed by this chest wall. So what we have is a structural sort of really rigid chest wall encircling the lungs. And then at the bottom of that sort of chest wall area, we have a diaphragm, which is a flexible structure that can be extended in order to generate the um, low pressures needed to inflate the lungs where you have the lungs in the center which are attached to the trachea again like the chest wall the trachea is sort of a more rigid structure it's less flexible um, so if we look at our little contraption the bell jar and the glass tube are these two rigid structures the trachea and the um, chest wall. We also have the flexible diagram and the balloon is therefore going to be the lung. So question 16 B is the correct answer. Mm. In question 17 we're asked to figure out which of the sequence of events occurs earliest when inhalation as a process is begun. So what usually happens in inhalation is the diaphragm contracts moving downwards which causes a decrease in intrathoracic or intrapleural air pressure. So in the normal lungs, the intrathoracic slash intrapleural area is this area between the lung slash trachea and the chest wall. So it's just this little bit here. Um, and in our little diagram, on the other hand, the uh, that area is going to correspond to this area between the balloon slash glass, glass tube and the um, bell jar. So the intrathoracic air pressure decreases because we increase the volume of this intrathoracic space by, de uh, by lowering slash contracting our diaphragm. Because of this, since we have a decrease in air pressure around uh, the balloon, well, what this, this results in a decrease in lung pressure and which creates a gradient between the air outside and the air inside the lungs. As a result, air rushes into the lungs, expanding the lungs and increasing the lung volume, finishing slash concluding inhalation. So in question 17, the correct answer is D, that the thoracic air pressure decreases first. Um, a, air increases the amount of air inside the balloon increases, that occurs quite late in the process. Um, before that, the thoracic air pressure at the lung air pressure has to decrease. So A is incorrect. B, the air pressure inside the balloon decreases. Again, that happens as a result of the uh, intrathoracic slash thoracic air pressure decreasing. So that uh, that is sort of towards the middle of the process. It's not right at the beginning. C, the, the amount of thoracic air increases, uh, that, that is actually just not true at all. And that's because this thoracic space is sealed. So whilst air can go into the lungs through the trachea, no air is actually going to be going into this um, thoracic slash intrapleural area. So C is definitely incorrect as that implies that there is some sort of flow of air into the thoracic space, which is not true because it's sealed. So the uh, only correct answer left is D, that the thoracic air pressure increases. Um, and that is true as we know, because when the diaphragm contracts and increases that um, intrathoracic, uh, air, uh, intrathoracic volume, we're going to get a decrease in intrathoracic air pressure. So D is the correct answer for question 17.